your own for yourself because just watching me do it sure i'm sure you're learning some stuff but nothing beats actually getting in there and doing the work for yourself so please if you haven't started your own hand reading practice maybe because you don't have flopzilla yet or if you don't even have poker tracker 4 it doesn't matter you can get equilab for free and you could just start ranging people and narrowing the range through the streets uh, on your own you don't need poker tracker 4 nor do you need uh, flopzilla those are just the tools that i use to make things a little bit easier uh, for myself because well because they're good tools to use so today is day 27 of 66 the villains range now you can see on the screen so far i've tagged all the different hands that we've uh that we've gone over here 26 hands total and you can see that we've done a ton in the big blind ton on the button but i think the rest of the time we're going to spend some hands um spend some time in the cutoff mpep and the small blind doing some hand reading there um and uh, specifically i was thinking because i'm kind of working on my three bet game and understanding my opponent's continuance ranges versus my three bets i want to do some three betting action here so so we're looking at carbon's hands carbon hands and then let's do some pre-flop action any three bet so where i where i made a three bet uh and specifically i want to look at small blind today so oh only one in the ep and we've already taken a look at that one so in the small blind we've covered one hand already you can see there's my 66 days of hand reading and so this looks like a good one look at all that action street by street and a check call on the river raise bet bet so i'm aggressive the whole time finally check call that river we are hand reading my opponent's range today so uh before we get to the hand and start looking at that let's whip out our tools um first off is the split suit hand reading charts now of course you can get those right there at splitsuit.com slash templates love these things i use them for just about every hand reading practice sorry about that garbage uh truck noise in the background you probably hear and then there's the flopzilla of course my two tools and then of course the hand history from poker tracker 4. so uh what is 877-99478 the date i don't remember the date i'll get that later right here so we're in the small blind let's see what happens of course we already know it's a three betting hand so chiatic who we've talked about before in a previous hand reading exercise uh steals from the button First off, let's see what their stealing range is because we want to know what their entire range is right here facing our three bet. So first off, when we just look at stealing, stealing percentage from the button, 44%. So quite a uh, quite a wide stealing range. We decide to three bet right here. You can see uh, it's a pretty healthy size three bet for sure. And then the, a call. So before, well, we could just look at that call right there. So let's see what they three uh, what they fold fold versus three bet from the button so raise and fold on the button 50 percent of the time which is only one out of two so mm, we're gonna narrow their range a little bit so first off is their opening range right we'll start with the 45 percent so i'm sorry not narrow the range a little bit we're not gonna be able to use that fold to three bet stat all that much it looks like in general folding to three bet just in position out of wow they don't like to fold the three bets hardly at all just in general right so we're going to keep a pretty wide range chiatic might feel that hey i have position i'm going to call and maybe utilize my position to steal a pot later in this bloated pot so we're going to actually keep chiatic on a pretty wide range not super wide but pretty wide um so when they when they decide and then open i'm sorry when they decide to open and then call the three bet let's actually look at our call three bet ranges here We'll go to kind of a wider range. Whoops, that's three bet. Dang it. Call three bet. Here we go. Start with this wider range right here. Um, two betting is pretty wide right there. Uh, but let's take a look at those. What are they calling with? I think Kayatic's probably calling with every suited ace. Maybe not every off suit ace. So let's leave those out. Um, I think Kayatic, what is Kayatic's four bet? Um, uh, four bet total 25% MP1 big blind one but nothing on the button so far so let's say that four betting is probably Queens let's keep let's keep both of the ace kings in the calling range 284 hands we haven't seen many four bets yet let's just keep it at a very tight four bidding range so let's say they're calling with a few others let's not call 
Mm, let's not call with the king 10 off suit. 9-7 suited, 5-4, no. Let's say 7-6 suited is the weakest suited connector they're opening and then calling with. Now remember, they're in position, obviously, and they like to steal. Uh, C bets a whole lot. They probably use, they're just aggressive overall, just in general, aggressive player. So if we see here, um, aggression factor and aggression frequency, this is my assassinato HUD. So aggression factor, flop turn river, as a total, it's 3.2% and frequency is 65%. So they love to use that aggression. Um, uh, and then so we can't expect a lot of post-flop aggression trying to take away pots from us for sure. So they could be calling with a relatively wide range. Now, for myself, I'm not calling with a ton of these hands, but we're going to put Kayatic on kind of a slightly wider range here for calling. Oh, wait, before I copy this, let's see here. Um, I'm going to keep off all the offsuit aces. Na, 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 na. King 9, it's possible. King 9 and Queen 9, but I'm not going to put those in. King 10, I could see all the suited broadways. Offsuit, I don't like these as calls. Some people call them, but I'm not going to say Kayatic calls that wide. Right there, all the suited aces, of course, because, you know, who doesn't love flopping a flush draw or flopping a flush and then playing in position, getting max value out of your hand versus a three better. So, yep, we're good here. Copying that range. It's 18% uh, 240 combos. So, re three bit versus a lag button steal. They just call. Now you can see Kyatic does not like to fold the three bets, right? So most likely I am three betting for value right here. So I'm just gonna put myself on the nice and simple pocket aces. We're just gonna start with that. Kyatic has the wider range. So you can see if we do have aces, 84% um, equity. What if we had kings? 77, what if we had queens? 74%. So you can see any of those standard three betting hands. Uh, I definitely have a very good shot at winning this pot versus that range. But we're going to keep myself on the aces. Makes sense to me. So let's see what comes on the flop. Queen, five, seven, diamond, club, spade. There we go. Queen, five, seven, diamond, club, spade. So on this board, if we have the overpair, 87% favorite killer man i mean they have plenty of queens in their range they have a lot of second pairs a couple of sets in the range as well but not top set so it's not like they have a nut hand right now if kyatic has pocket sevens or fives for a set then of course kyatic feels like it's the nuts i could have pocket queens in my range because three betting queens is a possibility for me well let's see what happens i decide to bet two thirds pot and kyatic just calls so on this board right here what is Kyatic just calling? Oh, let's look at stack sizes. 17 and then 14 behind. Kyatic doesn't have to force any action to try to get the stack all the way in if they have like a, a set of five, set of sevens, even five, seven, two pair, even though we don't have that in their range at all. I mean, if they had some kind of a, a strong hand that can beat pocket aces or kings right now, they don't have to be raising. So we can say that they are calling with just about, uh, well, with every single one of their strong hands, because it's not a wet board either. So they're calling with every one of their strong hands and a lot of possible draws or kind of like marginal stuff that doesn't want to give up just yet. Oh, the C bet is, uh, uh, the uh, the fold to C bet in position is only 50%, two out of four so far. So really, Kayak doesn't like to give up on one street. Maybe on the turn, they give up. So they're calling two thirds pot with their sets. Um, calling with, mm, yes, even queen 10 because hey, we could have ace king right here and we're firing one street with ace king their queen 10 currently beats us so that's possible pocket pairs those all a lot of players like to call on the flop with the second pocket pair thinking that maybe we have ace jack ace king ace 10 that is just firing a bluff c bet so those are possible uh to call with right now for sure well let's look at percentage form as we're going because as we saw already they like to fold not like to, but they fold to C-bets roughly 50% of the time. So we're going to probably get this percentage to roughly 50% that they're continuing with. Those weak sevens? It's possible. They can continue one street with those weak pairs of sevens right there. 
Now, weak, weak pairs, the under pair, the third pocket pairs, deuces, threes, and fours, and the five pair of fives, um, we're not going to put any of those in the calling range. Ace, five suited, sure, if it's like a backdoor draw, we can put that in down here, but not as just a pair of fives. Gut shots, 98. 98 could make the call. Over cards? Oh, ace, king, totally just make the call right here, that they did not decide to four bit with preflop totally. And the two card backdoor flush, which is actually quite a lot of hands. But a lot of them are ace highs. We got king highs. We have a pair of queens with backdoor um, power. So yeah, let's let's give them chiatic all of these hands. So it's actually 63% of hands that we say they're continuing with. 109 combos. So, oh, wait a second. On oh, the flop comes... So if we do narrow them down to this, whoops, we haven't done it yet. So once you click this, it uh, activates the filter. So if we narrow them down to this 109 hands, our equity with the over pair is still pretty darn good at 83% because they have so many under pairs and uh, second pairs and just draws, backdoor draws and stuff in their range right now. So it makes sense that we are way ahead at this point. The turn gives us the lovely, maybe not so lovely, uh-oh, king of spades. Now that turned a few of their top pair hands into two pairs now, all those various king queens in their range, which are totally capable of calling the three bet and then calling the flop C bet faux show. So given that king of spades right there, it doesn't help us at all. It doesn't add any equity with a backdoor draw. It's not like this was a, a 10 and you know we had a backdoor straight draw. So our equity dropped to 78% on this king because all the king does is it helps their range, doesn't help us in any way. And then we can actually see that. Whoops. Let's say this king didn't hit yet. Hotness chart out here. So you can see hotness describes how the next board card on the turn or the river will affect equities. Green means 100% equity for the range. Red means 100% equity for the hand. And then so um, none of these are necessarily 100% good for their range, but a lot of them just don't help our hand at all. You know, if a jack comes, if a king comes, if a 10 comes, how does that help our over pair pocket aces? It really doesn't, you know. The only cards that we really love to see are those aces and some of these baby cards because those are way out of their range now. We filter them out. So that's how you use the hotness if you want to think about uh, future streets and future cards and making plans for future cards. So, oh, was it King of Spades, I think? Yep, good, good. So on that King of Spades, we have 78% equity. What happens? We're out of position. We decide to fire less than a half pot bet, leaving 12 bucks behind, leaving roughly, it would leave the roughly the same 12 bucks over here behind. Um, I really feel like I'm going for value on this. I want a call by a random king, a random queen. Um, I think I have a set of queens. I think that's what I have here. I think I flopped a top set. And because Chiatic is not flop honest, I fired the C-Bet to get value out of him or her, is my guess at least. So 630. So on this King of Spades, what decides to call us? Oh, wait a second. Less than a half pot bet. So it could be a cheap bluff as well. Um, what am I bluffing? Ace Jack, Ace 10, I guess. Which I'm not often. Ace 5 of Spades. I could be bluffing like doing a double barrel here, I could have C-bet with an ace five of spades, backdoor flush draw, weak uh, weak pair. Now the king of spades hits, now I picked up a total flush draw. I still have the five, an ace can give me two pair, a five can give me trips on the river, so I'm double barrel bluffing. That's possible. It feels like value for me. Like it feels like I'm sizing my bet smaller to get a call, but it could be sizing my bet smaller to make a, a cheaper bluff right here. So, it's interesting what decides to just call instead of shoving all in you could see after this call 27 bones in the pot half stack behind or half pot stack behind anything good not anything good oftentimes really good hands are going to want to shove here and that's probably why i bet so small because i want chiatic to shove with some kind of weak two pair of five seven a king queen well king queen is not a weak two pair i currently beat it with my set of queens if i have that or I possibly want them to bluff shove some kind of a flush draw on the turn there. So what are they not shoving and just calling? Um, straights can just call sets. I don't 
they could be scared that we now have a set of kings or a set of queens with their undersets. So those can just to make the call. Two pairs, afraid of sets, um, uh, afraid of sets could just be calling here. Over pairs, top pairs, random kings, decent kickers, not the king 10 really, but those could just be calling because you could have seen them call on the flop like a king jack or a king 10 with a backdoor straight draw. If you couple that with like, Maybe it was King Jack of Clubs so that they had the backdoor straight plus the backdoor flush plus one over card. It's possible that they're making that call. Mid pairs, all those queens. Man, are they calling a second street? It is a smaller bet, so I might be getting value out of those mid pairs. I might be. Which mid pairs might fold here? Ace Queen is probably still calling another street. You know, I'm going to keep all these in their calling range. I don't think Kyatic really likes to fold at all, so let's keep them in. Weak pairs are folding now. Ace highs are folding. Flush draws. They're totally staying in. They just pick up, picked up equity. Um, they had a backdoor draw on the flop, hit the flush draw on the turn. There's no way they're giving up now. Uh -uh. Um, Open-ended. What are those? Oh, only the Jack-10? Yeah, sure. The Jack-10 could call. Gut shots? Eh, I don't think the gut shots are calling a second street. I mean, if you think about it, they need 24% equity. A gut shot only has like 8% equity. I mean, they're calling, it was mathematically, it's a really bad call. So let's keep those out of the range right there. So 61% uh, and 62. We'll take a look at the equities in just a sec. 62 combo. So if this is their turn range for just calling, and if I do have the over pair, we currently have 67%. Let's say I had pocket queens, which is what I think I have right now, 92% equity. We are killing it with pocket queens if that's what we've gotten. We're going for max value. Oh, what if we have the ace five of spades that I think is possible too? A pair plus a back door that just now hit a flush draw. Um, only 33%. We're basically just, it's a straight bluff right now if we did double barrel with the uh, ace five suited. Cool beans. So, Kyatic just calls, giving us a $27 pot, 11 bucks and 13 bucks. So it's pretty easy to get it all in here on a river queen of hearts. Great. Well, now, if we had the queens, we have clubs, not clubs. I mean, if they have the queens, we have quads and we're killing this hand right now. Um, if we do have pocket aces, it's actually a 50-50 chop right here on that river queen. Interesting. So what happens? So Kydex has called two streets now. I check and we get a shove and I decide to call. Um, if I had quads, I really do. Or even if I had aces, I think checking is the best thing to do here to get Kyatic to commit, to bluff at it. And then we get max value well, Kyatic could often just be checking behind on this board. No, I think we have aces. I think my first read is right. We have aces because I think if we had a super strong hand, a full house or quads, um, I think we've got a bet here. At least another six bucks just to get some value out of them because I think Kyatic is probably checking behind a ton of kings. Not checking behind any queens, but checking behind kings. Um, checking behind, of course, their busted flush draws. Uh, yeah. So I'm saying here, um, I don't have a super strong hand, but I'm check calling because I think I'm ahead of all the kings that could be shoving or all the bluff flush draws uh, that could be shoving. Busted flush draws, I mean to say. That's what I'm doing. So what here is shoving all in after we check? Full houses are shoving. Straights are shoving. Three of a kind? I would say they're shoving here. Over pairs, top pairs. I think they can all shove. We showed weakness on the turn. They're just trying to maybe by doing this, maybe they think we can call with pocket jacks or tens. Um, and they're maybe just making some kind of a weird, like a thin value bet, thinking that they're repping a flush draw and then we'll call with our jacks or tens. Weak pairs. I think those are checking behind. Ace highs. Da, da, da. So all of this stuff. I'm thinking this is their shoving range. Oh, wait. Ace highs. I want to include, and those are all the spades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe not weak pair, but ace highs are shoving as a bluff. No made hand. Oh, those are all their, oh, gut shots and open enders that whiffed. Let's say they're shoving there. Yeah, so they're shoving a pretty darn wide range. And at this point, we're 
and then we only need 23% equity to call. Yeah, we've got to make the call because our pocket aces are winning 50% of the time. So they've got 51 combos, which is basically 98% of that turn range. All right. So at that point, I mean, if that's what we're putting on, we've got to make the call because we're ahead of all the bluffs that we think they're capable of, <clears throat> excuse me, capable of making. Six, seven, eight, holy cow. Hey, okay, awesome. Well, I narrowed myself well. The six, seven, so that was in the pre-flop range. I think I took that out on the turn. So if we look at the turn, let's remove that, remove this. I think this is where I remove the weak pairs. Oh, let's unclick that. Okay, so the seven, six is in. Seven, six was a weak pair. I took out weak pairs for calling the double barrel. Um, so this is interesting that now I have a pretty good note to make on chiatic. Queens, six, seven suit. Okay, what is this here? Steel calls in position wide, seven, six suited or better. Yep. We'll just say button. Steel calls in position with seven, six. Capable of overly aggressive plays when checked to. So check for max value, kind of what I did here. Seems to like flopped on. So some other information there. Um, Yeah, so I think what I got to do is make a note right here. Capable of calling double barrels in position with a da, 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 third pair. Third pair, no draw. So planning to rep a bluff later. Check for max value. Okay, good. Yeah, so that's absolutely true about this player. Um, oh, positive poker insiders. Oh, hey, thank you very much, Al. I appreciate it. I just now saw your comment. So for those of you watching on YouTube, I, tw I stream these on Twitch. And Twitch, uh, uh, Al, Al Spath just stopped by from positive poker insiders and left a comment. So thank you very much, Al. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so at this time right here, it's looking like, I mean, wow, that's even a wider range. So on the river. Uh, queen of whatever it was. I don't remember. Hearts? Yeah, hearts. Um, <clears throat> on the river, we said that, you know, it's 50-50 right now. They're betting for value or bluffs, and that's totally accurate. You can see we're 50% ahead right here with our overcard. I mean, actually, they have a lot more bluffs in their range, so I just need to remember that Chiatic, you can see it's a 40-29. I use the orange color coding for super loose aggressive players. Chiatic is loose aggressive. I need to be willing to call down with a lot of different bluff catchers, maybe like second pair or better. I don't want to be calling like bottom pair. I don't want to be calling like a pair of fives here in this instance. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I think really Chiatic is a loose aggressive player that I need to watch out for. It's really good that on this table, I have position. This is the one hand when I'm in the small blind and Chiatic's on the button that I lose position or that I don't have position. But in general, this is a great spot to be in. Look, another loose aggressive with position on me. Um, very loose aggressive. Nice loose passive fish here. Nitty so far, but it's only been 10 hands. Yeah, so this is a pretty decent table to be at. I'm not a big fan of a loose aggressive to my left, but they're a short stacker right here. So uh, a little bit less of a concern when I can only lose eight bucks to this player. All righty, so I think that was a great hand. Even though it was unsuccessful, we took that out of their range. But hey, at least it was in their pre-flop range. We had it a 7-6 suited, so that's a, a slight benefit there. Um, but I guess now I know that Kyatic can call with those weak third pairs uh, in order to attempt a bluff later. All righty, y'all. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll be back with a day 28 later. Take care.